What's up everybody, welcome back to Totally Exposed. Now, if you're a Canon C200 owner like we are and you happen to use Adobe's Premiere Pro to do your editing, well, you're gonna be well chuffed because they finally, finally announced support for native editing of the CRM files generated by the Canon C200 within the application. Should we go and take a look? Let's do this. So when we first got the Canon C200, um, the workflow was pretty, well, pretty pants really. Um, I'm a Windows editor and there wasn't really much going for us at the time, Windows editors. We had the Canon Cinema Raw Development Tool, I forget its actual name. That was rubbish. All it did was output these DPX files, which were a pain to work with and they were huge, like even more huge than the already huge uh, raw files coming out of the camera. Not ideal. I think if they, it, on the Mac side, they could export it as ProRes. So, you know, that's that's getting somewhere, but there wasn't even any like DNX HD or DNX HR support. It was just these, these weird files, no. No. So along comes DaVinci Resolve, I believe they were next to implement support for Canon CRM files natively um, and that's how I've been using them ever since really. Um, I was importing them in and then I was even doing a little bit of a grade on them um, and then I was exporting them back out again as clips that I could then use in Premiere Pro to build an edit with. I'm not really a fan of using DaVinci Resolve for doing the editing, although it is becoming more and more of a capable kind of non-linear editor, but it's not really for me at the moment. So that was my workflow up until about a month or so ago, because Apple announced that they were going to have support for CRM editing straight in Final Cut Pro. And I'd already heard really good things about Final Cut Pro. I'd heard that it was super optimized for the Mac ecosystem, I don't own a Mac though, well I, I, yeah, well, I don't own a Mac. Uh, so I borrowed a Mac off of a friend and I got a trial of Final Cut Pro just to try it out and see how it works with the CRM files. And to be fair, the rumors are true, it, it was pretty fast, but there were just some things I couldn't quite get my head round with it. I just didn't like the kind of magnetic timeline thing that it had going on. And I don't know, maybe if I spent a little bit more time using it, I would get more familiar with it. But for me, Premiere Pro is where I, I feel most comfortable. So when Adobe, I think it was at NAB, or maybe it was just before NAB, which was last week or so, um, when they announced support natively to edit the CRM files, I was delighted. So I want to run through quickly how you do it. It's, it's, it's pretty simple but you know here we go let's go onto the uh, the laptop and we'll have a look so here we are we're in premiere pro um i've just set up a brand new project nothing fancy going on here uh, at the moment this is running 12.1.1 build 10 so um, what I've got here is I've got a test file, a CRM file, which has come out of the Canon C200. And I'm just going to drag it into my project and drop it in this bin here. Now you can see, finally, for the first time ever, we get um, we get to see the CRM file actually within um, Premiere Pro. This has never been a thing up until recently. But well, this is a, a little test clip of Neil um, playing with the Mavic Pro controller. Um, so if I were to make a new sequence from the clip, um, here we can see, obviously, we got all the four audio channels that have come out the camera. Um, and we can attempt playing it through. Let's just uh, let's just mute all the audio quickly, and we'll try playing it through. Now this is at half quality. It's dropping some frames, but it's not too bad at all, considering that this MacBook Pro that I'm using here is a few years old. This is a late 2013 MacBook Pro um, with an i7 processor in it. So not the latest and greatest, and yet it still manages to scrub through this footage reasonably well without dropping, well, you can see it started dropping some frames there as soon as I opened my mouth. And this is at half quality, not too bad at all. Um, obviously, if you drop it further and further down, if you played it at an eighth quality, you probably have no problems whatsoever. This is really good, I think, really good performance. So the best thing about having the raw capability within here is being able to adjust things like the exposure and the white balance and all that kind of stuff directly with the raw data off the sensor before it's debayered within the program. So let's have a look up here, shall we, at the effect controls of this clip. 
So what you need to do, you need you get your normal video effects here. You want to come across to the master clip. And once you come across to the master clip, you get the settings, uh, some similar settings to what you get in the Canon Cinema Raw uh, software, um, the, the raw development software, with the exception of sharpening, I believe. That seems to be lacking. But um, we can change the color temperature. So we can warm it up and we can cool it down. Uh, we can change the tint from a uh, kind of green to magenta. Um, we can adjust the exposure. Now this is adjusting the exposure straight within or straight from the raw clip and it's debayering that information again rather than as I say like you would normally do it it's say in the uh, Lumetri panel. Um, so this is a much cleaner way of getting your footage looking how you want it to look. Um, you can also change the color space. So uh, at the moment, this is in Cinema Gamut, Cinema Gamut, and C Log Two. Um, I could change this, for example, for C Log Three. It's not quite as an aggressive log curve. Um, and uh, you can you can start plopping some Lumetri color on here as well if you wanted to. So I could just do a basic create uh, correction. I could put for now. I just put the Alexa uh, LUT on. And um, obviously, I've been playing around wildly with the um, with the white balance of this clip. If I get it back to where perhaps it was at the beginning, somewhere around here, um, starting to look already pre-grade. It's a bit green. Um, a, a, a good a good clip, um, a good color clip. Um, we're debayering it in C Log Three. Now it's got a bit of color information on it. We can see how well it plays back now. It's a little bit more lethargic than it was earlier on. It's still dropping some frames. But as I say, on, on a laptop, let's not forget. Let's try a quarter. See, that's fine for me. I could edit off of that. No worries at all. Yeah, nice one, Adobe. Right, well, we hope you enjoyed that little quick video uh, talking about the Canon C200 and Adobe's Premiere Pro. If you did, smash that like button down below. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Give us a comment, share it with your friends, all that good stuff. It really helps us out. Uh, don't forget to subscribe as well if you want to see more content to do with uh, well, the Canon C200 or just, you know, photography, videography stuff in general. Um, and we'll catch you in the next one.